Hello viewers, welcome to our program, Marriage and the Home. Israel Tajumawo is my name and I remain your host for this program. I want to appreciate all who have been viewing this program. I also want to believe that you find this program interesting. There's still a lot that will, be, that will unfold as we are going on. So I want you to stay connected. I want you to subscribe if you have not subscribed. And uh, share to as many as you can so that they can benefit from this program. In our last episode, we talked about marriage. We, we asked that question, what is marriage? You know, we've been talking about marriage all along. I thought it was time for us to define the concept of marriage. What is marriage? In today's episode, we want to talk about marriage as God designed it. And... So, to carry on with this discussion, I have a special guest in the house today uh, to assist in this discussion. Uh, he has many years of experience uh, in marriage. He is a minister of the gospel uh, of the Church of Christ. His name is Ufot Abasiono. Brother Ufot, you are welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity you are giving me, and I'm excited about the series you are doing. One of the biggest things that I know that Christians have to do is the concept of marriage, because God has a plan for marriage, and he made so that human beings, each and every one of us, will enjoy from it. So I'm excited to be here, and I hope we learn one or two things together. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Yes, like I said earlier, our minister here has so many years of experience in marriage. I would like to ask, how long have you been married? Well, I um, was married March 8, 1998, so that makes me 20, oh. 18, 18, about 24 years in marriage. 24 now. years? Wow. That's a whole lot. Great 25 years. Yeah, that's a whole lot. And the marriage, you can say it has gone well. It has been peaceful. It has been blissful. It has been a happy one. Oh, that is great. That is great. And uh, how long have you been a minister of the gospel? I started preaching when I was 16. Wow. In a congregation of more than 400 wow. people. So I think I started doing the work of God right from that time. But I minister here in Owodi Ibeche for 13 years um, up to this particular moment. Wow. That's great. That's great. That's great. And as it is, I want to ask, with all your years of experience, with what we are seeing today, you know, people are presenting as marriages. What actually is marriage? That's a very tough question, but it's very easy also because the world today have their own definition of what marriage is all about. Marriage essentially involves the spiritual, emotional, and physical closeness. Hmm. And in the Old Testament, the Bible says so. God did not give us any doubt than to define marriage properly. In the book of Genesis... Hold on one second. You say marriage involves the spiritual, emotional, emotional, and physical aspects. Wonderful. Yeah. So, in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 24, the Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and both of them shall become one flesh. In other words, God has defined exactly what marriage should be. And even as Christ, God himself, described it in the book of Genesis, Christ himself also said so. So, I can say in essence that marriage can be defined as God-ordained covenant relationship between a man and a woman. This lifelong sexually exclusive relationship brings children into this world to satisfy God's plan for the redemption of man. That would be my definition of marriage. Totally. Okay. It's a covenant relationship. Yes, what I picked there is that it's a covenant relationship between a man, man and, and a, a woman. woman. We needed to be clear on that because, you know, there are so many kinds of marriages that we see these days. The song they call same sex marriage. And then you see somebody, they say he's getting married to an object, maybe his dog or his computer or something. There are so many things that we see in the world today. But for 
The purpose of this program, our interest is treating marriage as God ordained it. And as he has explained it, say it once more again. Marriage is God ordained covenant relationship between a man and a woman. It is a lifelong sexually exclusive relationship that brings children into the world and thus sustain what God wants us to be and complete as human beings. That is the essence of marriage. Thank you very much. I'm sure you have seen that, that uh, marriage, the way it, God designed it, is not what, the way the world sees it. So uh, I think that is uh, pretty clear for us. Now, I want to ask, uh, what is God's intention for establishing marriage? Well, God never leaves us in doubt about what marriage should all be. I will try and say so in three hours, if you will remember. Yeah. The first one is that, number one, is that we have to reflect God's image. Okay. Our marriage must reflect God's reflect image. Reflect God's image, yes. What does that mean? If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, I'll read. He said, And God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the, the, the cattle, and over all the earth, and over all creeping things that yeah. creepeth upon the earth. And he said something. So created, God created man in his own image. Yeah. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. In other words, if you take notice of the word image and likeness, which is being repeated in this verse, you will notice quite clearly that God has a plan. God wants marriage to reflect his image, image. marriage to reflect his likeness. Mm -hmm. So God creates them, man and a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you are married, man, woman, you complete God's image and God's likeness. Mm -hmm. So man represents a part of God, woman represents a part of God. So when two of them come together as one, you reflect truly what God's what marriage to be as an entity. So marriage, in essence, is a reflection of what God wants us to be in terms of his image. The second point I'd like to quickly talk about is reproducing children in God's likeness. You must notice that God also said in that place, in that same book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 28, he said, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be, multi be fruitful and, and multiply, multiply and replenish right. the earth. Now, in other words, God also had a plan that man and wife will reproduce after God's likeness. Reproduction, yeah. You have to reproduce after God's likeness. And what does that mean? It's not only by talking. Most parents go about just talking, talking, talking to their children. You must model your marriage. You must model your character. You must model your children as God wants it to be so that you'll be able to produce children after God's likeness. So number one point is that we reflect God's likeness in marriage. Number two is that we reproduce children according to what? God's likeness. If a man and a wife live together, train their children in God's likeness, you will produce children that will outlive you, children that will behave as God wants us to be. So technically speaking, that is exactly what God wants when he said marriage. And that's why broken homes is not an answer to God's, God's plan for the redemption of man yes. through marriage. We must as entity understand that the first is to reflect God's, uh, God's likeness. The second is actually to reproduce children in God's um, image. The third one likely is to reign in the spiritual realm. To reign in the spiritual realm. If you go back to that same book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 28, B, we said, and God blessed them and said, Go ye into the be multiplied, be fruitful, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. In that same book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 27, he said, And let them have dominion. In other words, God had a plan that we will have dominion as a couple over the affairs of our lives. So, not just physical dominion, but more so spiritual dominion. Listeners, let me tell you something. If you are together with your wife, together you will always dominate in the spiritual realm. Yeah. In the book of Je uh, uh, Ephesians 6, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, you and I, as an entity, man and wife who are married together, can stand together and reign 
in the spiritual realm. For whatever two or three are gathered in God's name, whatever they pray together, God will always answer their prayers. So that's why God says two of us can become one. The oneness is like we are going to be like God in likeness and in image. So our marriages must express that. Our marriages must depict that. And our marriages must be an example of that to as many that wants to get married. So God says, two of us together will become one. And that is the essence of marriage and my brothers and sisters and listeners. So again, what is the purpose of marriage? One, is to reflect God's likeness. Two, is to reproduce children in God's image. And three, is actually for us to reign in the spiritual realm. That, I think, essentially is what the Bible teaches about what the purpose of marriage is to mankind. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, you can see that God has his expectations in marriage, what he expects from us. And then we have to follow that. If we are not following God's expectation, then something is wrong somewhere. Do you really believe in God? If you believe in God, you must believe in his word. And if you believe in his words, you must follow his instruction. Thank you very much. Another thing that I want to ask, I know you said a lot about uh, 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 those who are involved in marriage, but I need you to state clearly. How many parties does God expect to, that a marriage would have? If you go for my definition of marriage in the yeah. first place, I said a man and a wife. A wife. Man, wife, not man, man not girl girl man and wife and then they have their business now to reproduce so in other words in marriage there's a man there's a wife and if god blesses them they now have children somebody may ask me if they don't have children for example what happens generally speaking you can also become mentors to children in the church to get the disciples for christ and also mentor them as a family so the truth of the matter is that Principally, there are two parties involved, a man and a woman. And if God blesses that family, you now have children as part of that nuclear family that God has planned on earth, where you train and bring up to reflect God's, uh, God's image. Thank you very much. This program is about marriage and the home. And like he has clearly said, a marriage to consist of a man, a woman, and if God blesses them, the children. That is the scenario we are supposed to have. Um, one of the things that we see in the world today is same-sex marriage. The question is, does God permit same-sex marriage? If there's anything as more than capital, no. I would have said so. Um, I can see God in his infinite mercy becoming very sad with what is happening in the world today. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? God was so angry because they had this sodomy going on and he had to destroy the whole nation. God will one day come back and deal with nations that are involved in this same-sex marriage. And I thank God for Nigeria and indeed a lot of African countries who have stood firm that all what they will recognize is marriage between a man and a woman because that is what God has ordained. So, listeners, if you are involved in that relationship, you have an opportunity for you to obey God and live such sinful marriages. Thank you very much. Okay. Another one that we have is that some of them agree. They say, yes, a man and a woman, but they engage in polygamy. It's still man and woman. Uh, does the Bible permit this? The Bible does not permit um, polygamy in any form. And if we go back to the New Testament, where, where it all began, where God actually said his plan, and Jesus Christ also found this in the book of Matthew. He said, for a man, shall leave his father yeah. and his mother yeah. and cleave to his wife yeah. and they both can become one flesh. Remember the issue of likeness and the issue of that I made, I made essence before? And God said in likeness and in their own image. If God wants you to be his likeness and his image, God wants you to be one. And the only relationship that God approves that two should become one yeah. is the concept of marriage. That is the essence. So no polygamy in marriage whatsoever. Thank you very much. Now, when we look at the marriages of the world today, so many things happen, you know? Uh, the way they live their life, it amounts to a lot of challenges. And uh, we can't really tell 
you know, what causes all this. Some of them we can tell. Now, looking at a couple that are God fearing, that have got married, you know, in a godly way, what is expected from them? Faithfulness is expected from them. All right. Faithfulness. Open communication is expected Open from them. Friendship is expected from them. If your wife cannot be your best friend, if you cannot com communicate with each other, yeah. the marriage, marriage is bound for murky waters. Yeah. The marriage is bound to have problems in the future. Yeah. So the man being the spiritual head of the church, of the house, I mean, of the house, I mean, must lead in the spiritual affairs of the home. Yeah. Right from the time of the Old Testament, the men were seen to be pioneers when it comes to spiritual leading of the church. Um, leading of the, I remember what, the, what Christ said, what the, what the Bible says, said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. The Bible also says something, for a man loves his people so much that he gives his life for them. In other words, in marriage, there must be sacrifice. Yes. In other words, both parties should be ready to sacrifice their entities for the marriage. In other words, satisfy their, their time, satisfy their income, satisfy their lives, satisfy also uh, sacrifice, sacrifice themselves yes. to that particular marriage in terms of being faithful yes. to the marriage. And I also think that critically is the concept of communication. From my own little point of view, one of the biggest things that have destroyed marriages is that both parties do not communicate. Yeah, yeah. And communication is key. And I must say this sadly, most couples do not know what communication is all about. Uh, sometimes the father just goes about passing orders on the family and they are not communicating. Mm -hmm. And this order sometimes do not yeah. get to the family, yeah, do not get to the children. A situation where you have your father coming back from work and all the children runs around and hide. There is no friendship, there is no coordination, there is no, there is no communication. That marriage is bound to have issues. My suggestion is that apart from love, which is ultimate, apart from sacrifice, we should all learn to communicate with one another. Thank you very much. Um, he has said a lot there. Love is very key. And uh, sacrifice is very key. Communication is very key. All these things, if you don't have them in your marriage, I mean, your, your marriage is heading for the rock. And yeah, really, if you look at it, this is one of the reasons why a lot of marriages are having problems. You have to do things God's own way if you call yourself a child of God. We are going to stop here. Well, let me say something, just to add to what you just yeah. said. Do you know that God had a plan for the salvation of man? God did not leave us to guess. Yes. God took time and wrote it down. Yes. So that he, he would not be misinterpreted. Yes. As parents, as lovers mm -hmm. in a relationship, we must understand again that communication is key. Yeah. God himself showed us the way. Yeah. He wrote it down. He wrote it down in languages and gave us abilities for us to interpret his words even to today without yes. essence of us making mistakes. God is good and continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. That's my, that's my bit. Thank you very much. We can see as he further, he went further to explain that even God had to communicate with us in a clear manner in the scriptures so that we will know what he wants. So we should learn from our God learn how to communicate to minimize all this problem. I want to appreciate you for viewing. Thank you for coming. Um, we want to also appreciate our guests, Raufot Abasiono. Thank you for your time. Thank you for Thank you very the words much. of wisdom. I want you to continue to watch this program uh, so that we continue, to, we continue to teach ourselves more things. Click on the subscribe button if you have not subscribed and please share to as many as you can so that they can also be part of this program. Till we come your way next time, I want to say thank you. Bye.